This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. While Putin's invasion of Ukraine has obviously had tragic consequences for ordinary Ukrainians, it's also exacerbating a pre-existing crisis in the global food markets. And that's because Ukraine and Russia are vast producers of agricultural commodities, including wheat, corn, rapeseed, and sunflower seed. And disruptions to export and supply chains have pushed food prices up around the world. And to discuss this topic, we're going to split this video into three parts. Firstly, we're going to take a look at the food crisis which preceded Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Secondly, we're going to explain how the war in Ukraine has exacerbated this pre-existing crisis. And thirdly, we're going to take a look at how it could get even worse. So let's start with the pre-existing food crisis. While much of the media has focused on Ukraine's impact on global food supplies, it's worth saying that the world was already looking at a food crisis without Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Mostly thanks to the pandemic, in 2021, the number of people in phase three or above of acute food insecurity, which is defined as people having food consumption gaps or being able to marginally meet the minimum food standards, hit a record high of nearly 200 million people, about double the 2016 figure. And this increase was mostly driven by growing food insecurity in Central Africa and Afghanistan, where some 20 million Afghans are at risk of famine this winter. And it's actually worse than it might seem, because just over half a million people, the highest figure on record, are facing phase five catastrophic levels of food insecurity, defined as starvation and requiring urgent action to prevent death. The vast majority of these come from Ethiopia's Tigray region, which is currently being starved of humanitarian aid by the Ethiopian federal government as part of a long-running civil war between Tigrayan militias and federal forces. So you get the point. Across the board, 2021 was the worst year in recent history for global food security. And unfortunately for, well, the world, things only got worse in 2022. Leaving aside Ukraine, there are actually three exacerbating factors in 2022. The energy shock, the global credit environment, and climate change. Let's start with the energy shock. As the pandemic began to subside, the subsequent spike in energy demand pushed prices up around the world. And this hurt agriculture, both because farmers need fuel for their machines, but also because ammonia-based fertilizers are produced with natural gas which became significantly more expensive during this time. Secondly, the global credit environment has deteriorated after central banks increased interest rates to combat rising inflation, which made it harder for farmers to borrow money. And this was particularly badly timed, both because farmers were already seeing increased energy, fertilizer, and shipping costs, but also because the volatility in commodity prices made it difficult to guarantee a profit. And finally, as predicted, climate change has hurt crop yields. China, the world's largest wheat producer, recently warned that delayed planting last year could mean the lowest crop yield ever, while India, the second largest producer, has suffered from extreme temperatures and a lack of rain, an issue which has affected crop yields around the world especially in the Horn of Africa, which is currently being ravaged by its worst drought in 40 years. So it becomes clear quickly that 2022 was already going to be a bad year for global food supplies, and the war in Ukraine only made matters worse. That's because Ukraine and Russia are big food exporters, together representing about 12% of all exported calories globally. Ukraine alone accounts for 20% of all rapeseed exports, 18% of all barley exports, and 8% of all wheat exports. Combine all those things together, and Ukraine's food exports provide the calories to feed about 400 million people. And that's why when Putin began his invasion in late February, analysts with an eye on the global food market started to get worried. They realized that if Ukraine couldn't export its grain, then food prices would get even higher, exacerbating the pre-existing crisis. And this would be especially bad news for North Africa, 
which is particularly reliant on Ukrainian exports. Now, fortunately, the war hasn't been as disastrous for food supplies as expected. In Ukraine, 80% of next year's wheat harvest has been successfully planted. And in Russia, the better than expected performance from the Russian economy has helped Russian agriculture across the board. Nonetheless, the invasion has prevented Ukraine from exporting much of its food. And that's because Ukraine exports a significant amount of its food via its Black Sea ports and especially Odessa, which is usually responsible for about 98% of all Ukrainian wheat exports. Unfortunately though, many of these ports have been partially damaged or entirely destroyed, and those which are still in working condition have been mined by Ukrainian forces in order to prevent amphibious assaults from Russia, which means, it kind of goes without saying, that commercial ships can't come in or out of these ports. And this whole export situation has been made even more difficult by the fact that Russian ships can't get shipping insurance due to the sanctions, and that Russia is currently staging a naval blockade in the Black Sea. Ukrainian farmers have tried other alternatives like trains and trucks, but Ukraine's exports are still down somewhere between 50 and 80% year on year. And that's also part of the reason why food prices are so high. According to the UN's food index, while prices are down slightly from their March high, they're still about 30% higher than they were last year, and about 70% higher than they were in 2020. And as I mentioned, this has been especially tough for Africa, which is both particularly reliant on Ukraine for its food imports, but also one of the poorest regions in the world, and one that's heavily dependent on imports for many of its calories. According to analysis by Rabobank, if food prices continue to rise, the cost of food in sub-Saharan Africa will rise from 20% of an individual's income to 35%, the steepest rise in any region of the world. And this could get even worse as well. In times of uncertainty, countries often impose export restrictions on their food in order to guarantee enough for their populations. In May, for example, India banned all wheat exports in order to protect their domestic supply, which ended up sending wheat prices even higher. According to The Economist, some 23 countries have imposed some sort of restriction on food exports. And if more countries follow suit, this would be particularly bad news for Africa. Much of the continent, and North Africa especially, rely on food imports to feed their domestic population. And all of this has created a new political angle for the war in Ukraine. And as a result, African countries have been conspicuously quiet about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. While only Eritrea actually voted against a UN convention condemning the invasion, 17 of the 54 African countries in the UN abstained, and eight more were absent. On the more recent UN vote to suspend Russia from the UN Security Council, nine African countries voted against it, 23 abstained, and 11 were absent. Ultimately, Russia's lasting influence on Africa has helped it to perpetuate the narrative that NATO expansion is to blame for the war, and as such, prevent the West from establishing any kind of global consensus. However, the coming food crisis and the impact of the war in Ukraine could change this status quo. If the West can convince Africa that Putin is to blame for the crisis, then he could lose support on the continent, and possibly even around the world. As we've hopefully made clear in this video, the war in Ukraine is not solely responsible for the current food crisis, but it certainly is a contributing factor. And if publics in countries sympathetic to Russia start to associate their spiraling food costs with the invasion in Ukraine, then sympathy in Russia could begin to wane. Putin is clearly aware of this, which is why he and the Russian government have been trying to blame the export problems on Ukraine's refusal to remove their mines, which the Ukrainians say are still necessary in order to prevent amphibious Russian assaults on the coast. On the other hand, the food crisis could put increasing pressure on Ukraine and the West to end the war as quickly as possible, and just accept Russia's territorial gains in order to soften the food crisis and the accompanying humanitarian catastrophe. Either way though, it should be clear that the numbers here don't look good. And if that's not clear, then maybe you should check out Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform where you can learn everything you need to know to better understand the modern world. 
In fact, that's kind of what TLDR is all about too, taking complex subjects that seem scary from the outside and turning them into something more understandable, and in turn, making the world a less daunting place. And understanding STEM better could mean all kinds of things for you. It could help you thrive at work, improve your grades at school, or even just help you learn something exciting and new. No matter what your reason is, taking some time to learn with Brilliant is a whole lot more fun than the boring computer science lectures that I had to take at university. There's no long talks and no textbooks. It's all about interactive experiences that have been put together by experts in their field to help you learn by doing. So if you want to take your next step with STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash LDR UK. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for supporting the channel.